Smile Sewer. Um, I have multiple hats. I facilitate the CIO chat. I have a column in CIO Magazine, and I also work for Dell Boomi. And so I'm really thrilled to be able to talk with you today. And with me is Charlie Betts. Can you give an introduction to yourself? Um, I am also wearing multiple hats. Uh, I am a principal analyst with Forrester Research. Uh, but my work with the Open Group uh, is a service activity uh, conducted by my affiliation with the University of St. Thomas, where I am adjunct faculty. So, Charlie, one of the things that Jeannie Ross spends a lot of time in her new book is talking about how digital transformation, transformation has changed. So, in the old days, it was about taking this analog process and making it a digital one. And I like to think of something like Concur, where sure. I used to have to do a manual thing and it had all this pain associated when it became a digital thing. But now she's talking about there being digital companies. Yes. You know, companies that are not necessarily optimizing a business process, but instead what they're doing is creating new revenue opportunities for the top. So when you look at it at Forrester, are you seeing this emergence of truly digital companies? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, the, the first 50 years of computing was all about digitizing. And, you know, we would take hundreds, thousands, probably millions of feet of file cabinets, put them on hard disks, and put computers up, and you know, actually be able to sort and slice and dice all that data. Uh, and this was an efficiency play. Very powerful, but not the same thing as what we saw with Amazon or Uber. Um, you know, these are truly digital native companies that were enabled by the existence of digital technology, but it's very hard to look at something like a Google Maps and say, well, this is just an efficiency play. It is something totally different. And I think that there is a key point that has been, that keeps coming up for me more and more lately. It's the move from systems that are merely complicated to systems that are truly complex. And the difference is, is, is that the complicated system, it's like an assembly line. Sure, there's a lot of things, a lot of moving parts, a lot of things that can break. But at the end of the day, it's just going to still keep producing a car. But the complex systems have emergent behavior, and this is what we're struggling with in digital transformation. Yeah, it's 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 amazing these legacy businesses. You know, I, I keep hearing. I, I someday Forrester's going to have to get me some numbers, but that it's twenty to fifty percent of run the business spend is just connecting everything. Yeah. And when you've got that kind of load factor, it, it's got to prevent a company from being able to be on the cusp of technology change. Yeah, integration has been a huge headache, and it's been one of the, the, the problems of IT. It's why, you know, IT, there's a number of reasons why IT was the gang that couldn't shoot straight for a long time. I mean, the Keystone Cops, choose your, you know, <laughs> golden era comedy of choice. Um, but integration was an enormous challenge. Now, on a technical level, and I don't want to go too far down the rabbit hole, that's getting better. Mm -hmm. A lot of things are getting better. I mean, I'm hearing a, a higher level of respect for IT and the, and the IT function in the context of digital transformation because we've solved some of these blockers like integration with technologies like REST and JSON, and we don't need to necessarily go there, but it makes it easier. Yeah, I mean, once you've got that, I mean, what Jeannie spends the time saying is, well, all of that stuff, uh, which, by the way, 72% of companies still need to fix, mm -hmm. you know, that's that's kind of table stakes now. What yeah. The companies that are innovating, that 28% of legacy businesses or all those startups, they're really focused on building digital offerings and digital in the vernacular of of open group digital products. Mm, I digital mean, are you products. seeing that emerge? Oh, heck yeah. I mean, I was at the DevOps Enterprise Summit last week. The project to product transition is in full steam. And let me, you know, I'll, 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 I'll advocate for the DevOps Enterprise Summit a little bit here. It's run by Gene Kim. I think mm -hmm. you know Gene. Mm -hmm. A legendary individual and just a dynamo of energy. Gene doesn't let Facebook, Netflix, Google, Apple, they're not on the stage at the DevOps Enterprise Summit. You know who was on the stage? 
BMW talking about its transition from project to product management. Optum Health, I mean, the, one of the biggest IT you know companies out there. You, United I'm Health a customer of it. Yeah, yeah, you know. You, and then who the closing keynote? U.S. Bank. Everybody talking about the transition. So this this transition's happening it quickly, is. and mm -hmm. so. You know, what really needs to happen is you need to get your act together, according to Jeannie, build your APIs to mm -hmm. connect things, and then start building these, you know, very efficient small teams. I mean, we've talked, yeah. I mean, there were a bunch of talks today. I was amazed. I thought we were going to be on the hairy edge here at Open Group, but there were a lot of talks about organization like AXA and others who are moving to these autonomous teams. I mean, yeah. I was just amazed to hear how many people were starting to say, no, I can't compete the old way. Are you are you seeing that uh, as well? Absolutely. And I think I love what I love about Jeannie's work is the fact that she's highlighting the, the question there still is a question. How do I keep these teams aligned? And I think that this is the, the next phase because these are semi autonomous teams. Right. Um, they are not fully autonomous teams because at the end of the day you still have an enterprise, you still have an overall product vision, product strategy, an overall customer who you know cares about you know the end the value proposition of the bank or the insurance company or what have you. So yeah, she and, and Martin and uh, Cynthia, who's the, the third author, have basically talked about the chartering of teams that it, it, it's not they're out on their own. They right. actually have to be working with some coordination yeah. with architecture and things well, like that. Well, what I love, and I know, I know we're, we only have a limited time here, um, but what I love about the new model is, and we heard it this morning from HSBC, yes, that's it's right. not about reviews and approvals, it's about trust and verification. And so we're moving from a glass box to a more of a black box right. uh, from an engineering perspective. What we're saying is, is you, you make certain commitments and then there's guardrails and forcing functions that basically you're going to be held accountable for the commitments that you make and this is something that also derives from how Amazon governs but we are not going to be looking inside your process and trying to govern it from a stage gate, phase gate, toll gate, whatever choose your gate perspective we can't do that anymore, it introduces too much friction right. this has enormous impacts for governance because we're dealing now, so here's where it's coming to back to me and my role as an analyst, we're coming up against decades of policies that are based on stage-gated governance. What are we going to do with those? There's so much more to talk about. No, there's more, more to talk about, more to think about here. I guess what we should end with is just a brief discussion on, you know, what is Open Group doing to help these enterprise architects figure out their new role and enable these digital businesses to be created. Well, I think Open Group's doing a lot, and I've, I've, uh, you know, really value uh, my my ongoing relationship, you know, with the Open Group uh, because it is such a, you know, you know, you get to a certain point where you know being of service becomes very important to one, and of course the IT for IT forum, which gives us a reference architecture for the business of IT, um, TOGAF, the Architect Standard. Um, but more recently, we have the Agile Architecture Framework, uh, and then me personally, I've been involved in the Digital Practitioner Body of Knowledge, which derives, all closing the loop back to St. Thomas, derives from the textbook that I wrote for my, my uh, class there when I realized that there, I couldn't find any textbook that suited me for what I wanted to teach people about Agile and Digital and DevOps and Cloud Native and all the rest. And so now we have the Digital Practitioner Body of Knowledge. It is completed. There is the, the, the certification exam is uh, going to be online next week at Pearson View. That's amazing. So if you're just getting started and you're trying to figure out What's this journey going to be like? There's a lot to learn from Open Group. Absolutely. And you can be successful at creating your digital business. It's going to require a different type of architecture. And we did talk about mm -hmm. that. I guess that's what we should end with. It's not where you control everything to the minute detail. So the enterprise architect is going to have to change a little bit in this. They are. They are. But I'm optimistic for the future of enterprise architecture. And I've had some wide-ranging conversations with very senior people at vendors and, and uh, systems integrators. Enterprise architecture is in, in a bit of a holding pattern. I, the way I characterize it, it's in a bit of the penalty box right now because it had a deserved reputation for slowing things down just a bit. 
but we need architects. You know, as we look at the scale of these platforms, the scale of digital systems, you have to have people who are everyday tasked with the big picture view. You can't just rely on emergence. Uh, you know, I, I... And I'd just like to end with a, a, a great example that I, I, in Jeannie Ross's book, and I got to meet the head of enterprise architecture a few weeks ago from them. Uh, DBS Bank, which is in Singapore, it built an API catalog for the internal people and external people. One of the things they created as an API was their ATM application. Who would have thought? There you go. But somebody came along and innovated from that. They made an app so that you can walk into a convenience store and pull cash out of a cash register. That's the kind of thinking that winners are going to have. Innovate where you can inside, but innovate on the external side too. And there's a lot more to learn, but we're going to have to leave you today, and we hope this was useful to you.